All right, episode two of our short little mini series that we're doing, Five Ways That Marketing Ops Can Win Over dot, dot, dot. So last week we did uh, sales, how five ways to win over the sales team. And today's episode, we actually wanted to cover how to win over the CMO. Mm -hmm. um, you may not have a CMO at your company, basically the um, head of marketing. And so five things that marketing ops can really do to um, impress their CMO or head of marketing and, and just really be their main support. You can be such a great ally to them and, uh, you know, such a valuable resource, which is why this role is so awesome, especially in this time where, you know, we all want some level of job security. So, um, yeah, so I'll kick it off with mm -hmm. the first one. Um, so we, I think we say this a lot, but, you know, really to elevate your role, but also to win over the CMO, make reporting and data a priority. And so I think even from the start, it's important to put in the foundational data structure um, that's going to support the, the request of <laughs> reporting that's bound to come from your CMO. So making sure that foundational framework is there. So that's like your campaign tracking, all of your campaigns tracked effectively in your market automation and your CRM system. Um, making sure any lead source or referral source attribution is set up. A lot of that's tied into UTM tracking, which you'd be surprised it's not really set up effectively um, in a lot of organizations. Um, and then also just location, persona tracking, because a lot of the um, other types of reporting they'll ask for is, you know, how uh, how well they're able to, um, you know, gather leads or opportunities from certain um, regional segments, but also their key buyers. Um, so that's another place to focus on when it comes to data. And really the, the next thing as far as like the foundations, but also just making sure that your data is clean and is syncing between your two systems properly. Um, this will ensure that when you do go to run any type of reporting and data, it's actually where you need it. And you're not just always trying to kind of, you know, firefight or figure out um, how to get the two systems um, in alignment with each other. Yeah. And we've definitely worked with some clients in the past where the CMO hasn't trusted the data. Yeah. And it can cause a lot of stress for the marketing ops and marketing team in general. So making sure that you're able to really believe that the data is right, helps you sleep at night, helps them be able to trust the data and really just smooth that relationship. Yeah. And one thing that can support what foundation you want to uphold or the the data that you actually need to acquire and make sure is in place um, is actually just meeting with your CMO, determining what mm -hmm. type of reporting they want to see, and then building out your framework from there and your dashboards. And I think that segues into the the next way that you can win over your CMO. Yeah, so it's not good enough just to provide just raw data where you personally, as the marketing operations person, you haven't thought about it as well. And you really need to think about what insights can be drawn out of this data. You're not just there to send them reports, send them Excel files, send them, send them Salesforce dashboards, send them you know, what if, whatever you're using, a BI tool or whatever. You need to really help them draw out the insights. They're busy. Um, they may not come from a data background. Obviously, a lot of CMOs come up through different ways through marketing. Mm -hmm. So you really have to help them draw out those insights. And even if they are able to draw out the insights, if you're, you're, you're a value add, you're adding mm -hmm. value to these reports and you're helping them there. Yeah, you're taking and that next step. Exactly. So that could be as simple as just pointing out something that you've noticed. Um, obviously, there's so many different insights that you can pull from data, but being able to critically analyze the data yourself to be able to draw out those insights is really, really important. And then on top of that, you, the data has to tell a story. So we're in marketing, we should be trying to tell stories because that's a really powerful way mm -hmm. to be able to help people understand what something means and data can be very complex. There's lots of layers to it and being able to tell that story as a marketer about what that data means and the story behind it is a really powerful way to get that message across. So the, some of the examples here is, is not just showing, okay, this is how many MQLs we got, or this is how many opportunities we got. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to show the trend. So in its simplest form, 
there's a few different um, uh, kind of data data formats that you can use. Things like you know volume data, you know how many over time. Things like conversion data, how the conversion rates improved over time. Um, things like velocity has the time from MQL to opportunity or opportunity to close or so marketing opportunity has gone down over time. So being able to show um, hopefully an improvement or even if something's been getting worse is a really powerful way to be able to help the CMO make decisions, right? Like if conversion rates are going down or velocity is it, the, the speed through the funnel is going up, then you need to be able to course correct and be able to fix those problems. Um, the other thing is like looking at data year over year. So mm. instead of saying, okay, well, last year we got, you know, this many marketing opportunities and this year we've got this many, you need to be able to show kind of the seasonality. And so instead, maybe you would show this many in Q1 last year versus this many in Q1, like at the end of the Q1, but once we finish Q1, this many in Q1 this year, is there an improvement? Has it gone down? Mm -hmm. um, and be able to show that story of improvement through different channels as well. And maybe a bonus points, if your CMO joined a year ago, that's a great report to be able to show, right? Like, okay, do you know what? Since you've joined CMO and since we've implemented all of these new strategies you've talked about, we've seen this X, this um, X percentage of um, improvement in marketing source opportunities, like this Q1 this year versus Q1 last year, or H1 last year versus H1 this year. And then also, have you started a new channel like virtual events recently? How are virtual events? What's the story there? Like, have you seen better conversion rates from vir virtual event leads? Have they been converting into pipeline better? Have they been turning into bigger deals? Do you know what I mean? Like trying mm -hmm. to really tell that story. So you're not just providing data, you're providing insight and your CMO is able to then talk to the rest of the business and just tell the story through data of how you've improved, how you've, um, you know, where you need to improve or where things you know, really need focus. Totally. And I think if you're driving that conversation, you also can then have that history and you can be the oracle kind of of that source of data and that actually make it easier when you do start to see um, interesting things happen with the data or you do know historically, you know, summers might be lighter for you guys. You can then provide insight to the CMO to maybe like front and back, you know, stack your um your year with more events since the summers are slower. So just simple things like that, but you can be that central hub of that knowledge. All right, the next thing. Um, so building a scalable but cost-effective tech stack. So your CMO owns the budget essentially, you know, for marketing and marketing ops and tech, the technology, you know, sucks up a huge amount of that budget. Um, so, you know, really focus on how you're going to use that budget when building up your tech stack, tech stack, because, you know, you can get trigger happy and so can your demand gen team. Everyone can find this like new tool that they want to use. Um, so the, the first thing is to focus on not just buying the next shiny object, but focus on what are the goals of the team? What is our budget? Also, what's your budget of tech to marketing spend? Because with marketing, you really want to be able to mm -hmm. scale your campaigns, run your campaigns. If you're buying all this these tools to help you essentially do marketing better or report on marketing, but you don't have any budget left over to actually do marketing, that doesn't make sense, right? So really plan for the future. But um, if you can, at a minimum, focus on what are some tools that are really going to help you build that foundation to do two things. And I always ask myself, does it support doing more marketing or more campaigns? Yes, then that's worth the money. Or can you tie the benefit of this tool directly to pipeline and revenue? Um, and that can be for like a tool that supports marketing or sales um, or like sales development. And a CMO will often support that if it's going to mean, you know, potentially more opportunities or revenue out of that. So um, when building out your tech stack, just know that you can add on later, but really focus on the things that are gonna truly make a difference or um, run more campaigns, like say like a direct mail um, tool, if you need to do that, that's gonna help you scale something that takes a lot of time or to benefit um, pipeline or revenue, that could be something like investing in a um, chat tool or something that you can book meetings directly on your website because that's gonna essentially maybe help you um, create more revenue. Yeah. 
And I guess the one other thing to think about as well is how painful is this going to be to take out at some point? And is it going to be not embarrassing, but is it going to look bad on me if we have mm. to take this out in a year? You see a lot of companies get trigger happy and then a year later you don't renew. And that's not a good look, no. right? I mean, obviously we want to be experimenting. We want to be trying new things. But if you start getting the reputation with your CMO that this this guy or girl is just buying a load of tools and just using them for a bit and not and then getting rid of them after a year, it that's not a very good reputation. And it might be to harder to get that budget later <laughs> when yeah. you actually do need a tool. So. Exactly, you kind of cry and wolf a little bit there to, to get new tools. Yeah. Um, and then kind of kind of leading leading on to that, and obviously tools can can support this, but you don't you don't it's not it's kind of tool agnostic and it's not really reliant on a specific tool, but just making sure that you can support a high volume of campaigns. So tools come into that, but really it's around process, templatization and training mm -hmm. because your CMO probably wants to really push the team to deliver on a lot of campaigns. I've, I haven't met a CMO <laughs> that's like, I don't want to do that much this year. <laughs> so um, yes, obviously we, they, they're probably, there are some out there that want to focus and, and keep their team focused. But the idea is always to have a lot of high quality campaigns and marketing activities, marketing initiatives. And if the reason why that you that you can't deliver on the CMA's new you know strategy or new tactics or new initiative is because your campaign execution process isn't able to support any additional campaigns, then that's again not a very good look from the CMA. You need to be able to have that process nailed down. You need to be able to have the the rest of the marketing team trained where they need to be trained, depending on how your campaign execution process is set up like whether marketing operations does it all whether whether the other team supports it or wherever that handover is but being able to have that process seamless mm -hmm. and be able to have that wiggle room to be able to take on more is a really good way to impress your CMO. Mm -hmm. yeah definitely and they can um partner with you on that as well so it might even be meeting with your head of marketing or you know, the VPs below them and really deciding on, you know, what's what's going to be our campaign planning structure? How can we support that? Because they're part of that whole plan. And then also then you can decide on what's going to be the templates for actually executing on the campaigns that the whole team can use. So, all right, last thing. So marketing ops can be really busy. You know, this is why we're doing this whole video um, series is because we support pretty much the whole business. So, but really, you know, when it comes to impressing your CMO, especially marketing, ops rolling to marketing, is prioritizing your team's work based on the marketing team's goals as well as the business goals. And usually the marketing goals are going to roll into the business goals. And um, this will really help your team, you know, one, spend their time where it's going to be most effective. Um, but two, if you're working, if everything that you're reporting up to your CMO on like what you're doing for the business falls in line to their goals, you know, they're going to be really sure that you're really providing value and impact. And it makes it really easy then if a new initiative comes on board, if it doesn't support those goals, then you can deprioritize that. And if there's ever a question from your CMO, from maybe another group that gives them heat, hey, why didn't my project get approved? Well, you can always point back and say, you know, um, Mr. or Mrs. Um, XYZ, this didn't support our, our, you know, the marketing team's goals, which is why we didn't go with it. That's going to be an argument they can't really refuse. And, um, so when coming up with, um, how you prioritize the work, you know, always have it be supporting that because it can be so easy to get, um, led astray with other projects or requests coming yeah. from so many different teams. Yeah, and we speak a lot of people to a lot of people in operations, and there's a very consistent theme um, where a lot of times you don't even you kind of get to the end of the month and you don't even know what you what you've worked on. Yeah, because you've been pulled in so many directions. You started one project, wasn't able to finish it because you got pulled in another direction. Um, so imagine CMO wants to have a meeting with the the person in marketing operations, you, and and they ask you what have you been working on the last month, and you just go, uh, uh, I mean, well, I kind of you you can't really really say yeah because you haven't gone through that process to really prioritize your team's work 
um, and make sure that there is that highly strategic, highly valuable work that's taking up your 80% of your time. And then you're dealing with all of these other requests in that 20% of your time. And then when you are, when you do have that conversation, you can be super confident. You can say, I worked on, you know, over the last quarter, I worked on these five big strategic projects and I got, you know, X amount of those across the line. This is the value they provided. This is why we did them. And I will say, you know, help support the team through all of these you know, minor tasks as well. Yeah. All right. So should we recap five ways? Yeah. So make reporting and data a priority. Number one, mm-hmm. uh, make sure that w- with that within that priority, you're pulling out the insights for your CMO and executive team. And you're able to tell that story and help them tell the story that they're going to be telling to the board and to the CEO. Uh, make sure that you're building a scalable and cost effective tech stack. Mm-hmm. because you don't want to waste money. You've got to be providing ROI with that tech stack. You don't want to get the reputation for you know, getting new tools and, and never seeing them through. Making sure, the, th- the fourth one is making sure that you have a really seamless campaign execution process um, to be able to support a high amount, a high uh, volume of campaigns. And then the final one is making sure you're pri- prioritizing your work and your team's work really in line with the business goals so you can prove your, your team value. Yeah. All the way up to the top. Totally. So that's five ways. You're probably maybe doing a bunch of them already, but five ways you can really win over the CMO and, um, you know, just, just further supporting how marketing ops can truly provide value to the business. So tune in for our next um, episode of this mini series. Uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah.